Hi everybody, I'm Henry Walters and this is Hey Bay City. So Henry Walters, you sent me a message huh, I want, uh, a month, a couple months ago. You're like, hey, I've got a brand new EP. Listen to it. And, and people send me music. Yeah. All the time. And I listen to it and some of it's good. Some of it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but man, your first track just took me away. It was awesome. And so I'm excited to talk to you today, man. Oh, it's great to hear that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a, let, let's give a little bit of 101 of Henry Walters first before we dive into the music. Give me a little bit of your background. Where, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? How'd you get into music? Tell me that. Well, I grew up in town here in Bay City. I've always had a background in music. My family's always been involved in music. My dad is a guitar player and a musician. I started to take it more serious when I joined band in middle school. Oh, really? Moving on into marching band. Yep, also. What, what instruments do you play? drums i was on the drum line okay cool oh man the drum line is so cool oh yeah i always thought so yeah <laughs> then you get to smash stuff and i i played the trumpet which is cool oh yeah to all you trumpeters out there you're, you're cool but not as cool as the drum line the drum line is pretty rad dante from the band he was a trumpeter oh really yep okay okay so you get you you join band you're starting to get in more of the music thing take me from there well, I started writing around the time I was about to graduate. I had been playing guitar a few years at that point, and I had, I had written a little bit, but nothing I was super satisfied with. Mm -hmm. By the time I was uh, about to graduate, I had a set of songs I was pretty proud of, so I started putting in work, talking to local venues and stuff, and uh, it was about that time I played my first show at Electric Kitsch. That was a... Oh, yeah? Yep, that was a fun time. What Just a solo show. Twenty. 2018 i believe okay and uh, that had to be a cool venue it was Playing it was in the record store i was happy to see a, a pretty good amount of people come out too it was everyone was having a good time i had fun <laughs> yeah was, was that your first show at electric kids yes yup okay yep okay Nervous about that at all or or are, 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 do you take to the stage like a pro or i was i was a little nervous because I hadn't done it before, but but I was fairly used to being on stage in front of people from my experience in concert band back in school. Yeah, 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 cool. So you, you play your first concert, did the bug get you there, and you're like, yeah, this is my jam. Pretty much. I just never stopped writing, and the more I wrote, the more proud of my writing I'd become, so I worked harder to, to bring it to people. In May 2019 is when the band officially formed we just went by henry at that point it was with my brother sid on drums and our buddy dante schuff on bass and we got our first show playing in support of a local metal band insomnius and from there we just kept getting asked to play shows and stuff and i i kept reaching out to more places it kind of got bigger and better as we went on yeah very cool. In, uh, any kind of influences, any inspiration, the artists that you, you were like, yeah, this is this is my sound or this is what I want to model my sound after? Well, it's kind of a varied list, actually. Obviously, I like a lot of classic rock, the mm. Beatles, the Who, the Stones, Bob Dylan. Yeah, you can hear that in that first track, yeah. the local scene. I was like, oh, yeah, move over, <laughs> Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> but I like a lot of... A lot of trip hop and techno too i like gorillas and beck and saint vincent that style oh, of yeah. thing and uh, i like uh, a lot of modern indie artists too i'm a big fan of bands like foxygen and the lemon twigs artists in that vein so a lot of it is kind of more rock centric but i do also really like hip-hop and jazz i love easy e is <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> a huge influence on me that most people might not hear i love it you, you, I, I interviewed and recorded with Callista, Callista Sylvester this morning, and she she mentioned the Lemon Twigs yeah. as well. She's like, are you hip to the Lemon Twigs? And I am not. She's like, you will love them. They're worth checking out. They? They're, they're really cool. Okay. I, I, it's, it's intriguing to me hearing you talk about your, your influences in, and just kind of all over the place they are because, because you can hear it in your, in your EP like it was... Like you have you have track one, which is, which is kind of that Stones vibe, that kind of rock vibe, and then I don't I don't 
take this in the absolute best way because I mean it in the ap absolute best way. But then yeah, you get a little bit messier and there's some experimentation there and it's, it's a little unpredictable. And I love that. I mean, you, uh, yeah, I love that. Studio experimentation is a, a big part of what we do in the band. That kind of stems back to that, that Beatles influence. I love listening back to Revolver and Sgt. Pepper and just yeah. hearing stuff that that was original at the time and now we just it's so ingrained that we take it for granted to think at a time people were like what the hell is that sound <laughs> <laughs> so i try to i try to mix things up and do things i haven't seen other people do and um i doubt i'm the most original guy or in, in the planet or anything but but i i try to mix it up yeah uh, i love that right earlier this year i had an interview with andy reed and he just he just gushed for an hour about the Beatles. I mean, like everybody knows the Beatles and and we love their songs, but from his perspective as a producer and an engineer, like you, you mentioned, studio experimentation. The, I mean, that's the entire other side of it. Just how yes, brilliant yep. they were in the studio. And I love that you, you're talking that way. We were talking a little bit before we we started recording that you that you guys also produce all of your own music is that right yes it is why go that route instead of hiring somebody and going in the studio why why fly solo in that regard a big part of it is just the accessibility of a home studio in this day and age you don't always when you're a working artist like i am you don't always have that extra cash flow to go into a professional studio we've been lucky enough to work with some college radio stations and get to do some recording in their studios which is a very cool learning experience but even after that, I kind of liked just to be able to apply that experience back into our home studio, kind of take what we learned and apply it to what we had done in the past and improve from there. Mm -hmm. a, a big part of what's cool about doing your own producing is that you're not reliant on somebody else's vision or somebody else's idea of what you should sound like. If you have an idea in your head, you can really you can really learn what you need to do to achieve that sound. Mm, yeah. It's a, it's also, I think, a, a, another side of the craft of creating music. I mean, well, the uh, one part of it is the writing of the songs and the playing of the instruments, but then the other half of it is, well, how how do you play in the studio? How do you experiment? How do you get, get this, all the sounds that you want? That's where, that's where I'm really lucky to be working with my brother, Sid, and our buddy, Dante. We're all in that same position where we are, we're musicians, studio hand, engineer types. We all are interested in production and musicianship mm, as well. Very cool. Yeah, it definitely would be tougher if you're a solo artist trying to write the songs and play the songs and then produce the songs all by yourself in your house. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. When, I, when I started... I didn't know much about music production at all, but, but Sid was already learning about that stuff. He had a, a tape machine and he would do a lot of, a lot of demo type, experimental type recordings. And it kind of opened the door for, for once my songs became more developed, it really opened the door for us to put them on the tape. Yeah. Awesome. Let's, let's talk a little bit about your songs when you, it, maybe specifically about the EP that you put out. What, like what inspires you to write the songs? Is it personal stories? Is it emotion? Is it kind of crafting melody, things like that? Or, or what's your specific approach? Working on this new album, Hot to Trot, a lot of my influences had come from my experiences playing in the band for a few years now. My experiences traveling around the state, going to gigs and stuff like that. And it was also influenced by my, my romantic relationships because I love love songs and pop songs about girls and stuff like that. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. And another major influence in this new album, Hot to Trot, had been reading philosophy. I'm not very well read in philosophy, but, but I have been trying to expand my horizons and reading about these things like the collective unconscious mm. and, and the sort of belief that, that less is more is a, is a recurring theme on the album wow okay we're we're getting deep stoicism and the collective <laughs> unconscious I, I love that man but we thinking back to if, if I, I believe you said f almost five years yes yep. yeah do you have a favorite gig that you've done 
honestly, my favorite gig we've done was probably last week. In my opinion, it's the biggest thing we've done yet. That band I mentioned, the Lemon Twigs, they were playing at the Magic Bag in Ferndale and their opening act unfortunately couldn't make it. The car broke down and they weren't able to get to the gig. So, so Michael from the band, he called me up and he asked if we were available. And so we packed up the gear and hurried on down there. And it was a really good time getting to hang out backstage and oh, yeah. playing at a, a bigger venue, playing to a bigger crowd. It was it was kind of the type of thing I've been working towards. So awesome. I was really happy to do it. Yeah, I'm happy for you, man. Oh, I thank mean, you. It's, it's kind of the 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 daydream of every musician where it's like they're on stage and the guitarist gets sick and like does anybody in the crowd play a guitar <laughs> and you become the all star everybody here you guys are saving the day for an opening act that's awesome oh yeah a month or two ago did you play a show at art department over on midland street uh, yeah actually twice in the past few months oh, i yeah? have yep a guy from new york jw francis a pretty cool musician he was in town and i opened up at that show for him cool and a couple weeks back we also had the album release for the new hot to trot album there at the art department oh really yep. awesome yeah I, have, I unfortunately i haven't been able to make it over there but that, that's got to be a cool venue like it, it is yeah i love like white's bar in saginaw is such a great great venue because it, it it's so small well, like oh it's, yeah it's a very intimate setting exactly and i would imagine art department has kind of a similar feel where where everybody's in that room and we're like we can strum your guitar for you we're so close that's got to be a cool experience it is I, I i like playing and seeing the crowd right up close like that that's one thing that was a little bit different for me playing at that magic bag show is that the st the crowd was so dark and the stage was so bright i could i couldn't see anyone i was playing to <laughs> yeah i know this is a bigger venue but i can't see you. <laughs> that's awesome what it what maybe give me a teaser of some shows that you have coming up you got any shows on the docket here yeah this saturday we're gonna be in oscoda playing with some punk groups oh fun november 9th we will be here in town at bemo's and after that, we're going back down to Ferndale on November 25th to play at a spot called The Loving Touch. We're going to be playing at a... That's a really cool event we're going to be playing at. Actually, it's a, it's a charity, a women's charity called For the Periods. So the entire event will be to raise funds and to raise like menstrual products and stuff for For the Periods. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. When when you look forward, like, I mean, crystal balls don't exist, and this <laughs> might be a ridiculous question, but like, when you look into the crystal ball, and and you you seem like a guy who's very very intentional about his music, very intentional about the sound, very intentional about what you, what you want to do, and what what do you want to do with your music? Well, like, what to you defines a successful music career? Well. I don't expect to be the next Kurt Cobain, <laughs> but <laughs> but ideally what I would like to do, I was actually just saying this to a friend, what I would like to achieve would be the level of fame that Jerry has in the TV show Seinfeld. <laughs> if I were paying my bills by playing gigs, that'd be that'd be it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, enough talking. I would I would love to hear you play some songs. Awesome. What what, what songs are you going to play for us today? I'm going to be playing a couple off of the new record. One is called Wildflower Bouquet. That's a love song, as I had mentioned. And the other one is Hot to Trot, where you'll get some of that philosophy I was talking about. Okay, both sides of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. star in the sky Sometimes it takes darkness to shine Like a flower in a field Some kind of beauty better left unrevealed Always wanting more Not sure what the future's in store I thought 
what you should know. So if you leave her hanging, she won't be sticking around. Oh no. What's the use in shining? She ain't got the need So you can save your empty apologies After all it's okay But you can pick her, put her in your bouquet Oh boy she is She's somebody's baby I thought you should know So if you leave her hanging She won't be sticking around Oh no She's somebody's baby I thought you should know So if you leave her hanging She won't be sticking around She won't be sticking around Take it, leave it as you may It's all the same to me Hey robot, I'm hot to drop my Unorthodoxy This one for the ladies And this one for my friends And this one to eternity I hope it never ends in spite of all the danger the party rages on always going never showing your eyes to gaze upon I'm all about the good times like hot to try you gotta strut your stuff in love but don't think that I forgot And is it just paranoia? Or does everyone Want a piece of me? From the girl next door to the thought so everyone want a piece of me Lunacy Vanity You need what I got Hot to try Hot 
hard to try Yes, it's easy to see, babe Yeah, I'm your fantasy, babe Oh, but I get that a lot Hard to try Hard to try Hard to try